Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading for the full moon lunar eclipse in Libra at five degrees, seven minutes on March 24 or 25th, uh, 2024. Welcome. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of galactic points, fixed star celestial bodies to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And that is to help us start to connect with a broader multidimensional galactic perspective of astrology, but also our soul's journey. The soul journey that we all have it's vast. And so is galactic astrology. So I'm inviting you to have an open mind, open heart to these messages that are coming through in this galactic astrology reading. What you will receive here are three energetic themes that I have pulled out from the full moon lunar eclipse chart. And also I will at the end provide you with some questions tailored to this energy at this eclipse. It, should you want to work with some questions to integrate this energy some more? So I welcome you here. I'm excited to do this reading and I welcome every new subscriber to this podcast, the, the videos uh, that I publish. I am so grateful. Thank you for all the beautiful comments and views, subscribes, likes that I have received. And this helps to share uh, this type of content even further. So thank you. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There is a link below in the description box to download it. This full moon lunar eclipse is a liberating one. The full moon lunar eclipse is conjunct the supergalactic center uh, and also trining the hiatus star cluster. The ruler of this eclipse is Venus, and Venus is at 16 degrees of Pisces at the moment, conjunct the uh, constellation Eridanus, and specifically the fixed star Archenar. And this is a energy that is completely liberating and futuristic. This lunar eclipse is a force of release, of liberation. And we may feel that we are expanding into a expanded view of what relationships are in our lives and how we can view our relationships differently. Because Often we seek inner peace and we are yet with relationships that are pulling and tugging at us. This lunar eclipse is really meant to um, shake this dynamic all up. Perhaps we have relationships that have been stagnant for a while and we want to welcome new uh, relationships in. So this super galactic center uh, conjunction with the moon here is going to provide us with this refresher of relationships and perhaps a new perspective of how we relate to relationships in our lives currently. This full moon lunar eclipse is also talking about that boundaries is essential because once we establish boundaries, we also can let go. And boundaries provide us with freedom, ultimately. So that all coupled to our perspective on relationship, uh, since this full moon is at five degrees of Libra, it's going to feel like uh, reality, things may happen in our physical world that feels real that feels like things just has to be shaken up a bit and in a good way because expansion is often uncomfortable, but it leads to something really beautiful at the end. And how many times have we looked back on our lives to say, okay, this was really uncomfortable at the time, but now thank goodness it happened. I'm so grateful that what happened as part of my relationships or the relationship to myself. This lunar eclipse is really meant to 
uh, utilize the supergalactic center uh, gravity of uh, universal wisdom to get into the mix, into the mix of how we view relationships multidimensionally. This lunar eclipse is also about how we expand to share with others. Now is the time to uh, come out of the shell. The supergalactic center is going to pull us forward in terms of spreading the word, spreading the, the message that we have. And each one of us have something to share that has the potential to influence others in a direction of love. And this lunar eclipse is wonderful to seek a new direction, to seek another added layer to what you're sharing with the world. Because many of us have been sitting on uh, many ideas and thoughts for quite a while now. This lunar eclipse is here to allow us to share with others and focus on that. So before we go into taking a look at the lunar eclipse chart, I'd like to share what the three energetic themes are. The first theme I've called multidimensional relationships. And as a highlight here is uh, the air trine with the supergalactic center in focus. But also uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about Sedna because Sedna is one part of this uh, air trine along with Pluto as well. The second theme I've called Be Your Own Guru. And here we are focusing on uh, the alignments that we see in the sign of Pisces at the moment uh, and, our, and the call for us to step into becoming our own guru and uh, wisdom uh, source. And here I'm going to talk about Eridana's constellation and specifically the fixed star Archanar. The third theme I've called a spotlight on self-liberation. And here we have the focus on the sign of Aries and the constellation of Andromeda and specifically the fixed star Alparats, but also the constellation Cetus and the fixed star Tau Ceti. So let's have a look at the lunar eclipse chart next. So here we have the Lunar eclipse chart, the full moon in Libra at five degrees, seven minutes. And I want to show you here the moon's conjunction to supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra there at the top of the chart. And also making a trine to the hiatus star cluster at six degrees of Gemini. This is a flowing trine that is uh, full of creativity uh, free, very free spirited energy. A lot of this super galactic center and interaction with the hiatus star cluster is so beneficial for enlivening the creativity and life force around imagination, creativity, and, and creation in general. So that I am happy to see this trine with hiatus star cluster. And as in every full moon, there is an opposition between the moon and the sun and the sun there at five degrees of Aries, you can see. The ruler of this lunar eclipse is Venus. And as you can see here, she is in a powerful position in Pisces at 16 degrees here, making a sextile, a very powerful sextile to Jupiter at 15 degrees of Taurus. And uh, Venus, she is conjunct the fixed star Archanar. Uh, which we're going to talk more about in the second theme coming up. But Venus, also I want to highlight, is making the sextile to Jupiter. Jupiter is conjunct the Andromeda Almach, fixed star Almach. And Almach is associated with Venusian energy, very feminine energy, also in relation to artistry. Uh, being the truthful wisdom keeper. Um, so it's a very uh, powerful connection that Venus is making to Jupiter conjunct Andromeda Almach at this time. And as you may know, Jupiter is making progress up to 21 degrees of Taurus later in April to make that powerful once in a lifetime conjunction with Uranus. And this connection here between Venus 
and Jupiter at this time is very promising when it comes to keeping our um, feminine sovereignty in place at this lunar eclipse. Because all, all the swirl, if you will, that is uh, in, incoming from super galactic center, in a way, swirling up our relationships to a new dimension, to a new perspective. And also, if you notice, Venus in that sextile with Jupiter at 16 and 15 degrees, what do we have in the middle in the sign of Aries? Well, the North Node is sitting right there at 15 degrees as well. So this is a very prominent degree. 15 degrees is in the middle uh, of each sign. And it can also symbolize, you know, turning a page uh, over to the other side. So I interpret this uh, placement of the ruler of this lunar eclipse, the North Node and Jupiter at this time, really, it is a, a page turning uh, time that we're in. So, so here we have the first theme that I called multidimensional relationships. And I want to highlight this prominent air trine that actually has been in place for a while with Pluto's ingress to Aquarius here. And you can see Pluto is at one degree of Aquarius at the moment. And also Sedna's long-term placement here around the cusp between Taurus and Gemini. But this lunar eclipse with the moon at five degrees of Libra, their conjunct the supergalactic center, is really emphasizing this air trine. And this is what we are going to feel is the swirl, <laughs> right? And at this lunar eclipse, focusing on Libra relationships, seventh house. So, but before we go in to talk more about supergalactic center, I'd like to highlight Pluto's alignment, conjunct alignment to Aquila Altair at one degree of Aquarius here. Aquila Altair, the fixed star Altair, is associated with this dynamic, this uh, polarity between the ego and the spiritual self. And Pluto's long-term alignment to Altair is going to help us unearth the transformation, the permanent transformation of our relationship to our ego versus our spiritual self. And here it's really almost exact Altair um, with a very close orb at this lunar eclipse. So it's going to be highlighted how we are experiencing our ego versus our spiritual self. And perhaps we have new insights coming in uh, about that relationship. So here we have the supergalactic center, which is also called M87 in the Virgo A galaxy, uh, located at two degrees of Libra. And uh, I pulled out a couple of images here that are available for us to... Uh, really start to associate with the supergalactic center as a massive universal wisdom energy as part of a, this black hole. Now, I pulled in an image here of the mirror, as you can see above me here, <laughs> is uh, this suggestion that this energy is really about how relationships are uh, mirrored to us and vice versa. Uh, being here located in Libra, it's that relationship between self and others with focus on others. So I wanted to just uh, show you this to connect with as part of this uh, beautiful air grand trine. As part of this air trine, we have Sedna as well as a key player uh, conjunct the Pleiades star cluster and also with the moon's uh, trine here to hiatus star cluster, Pleiades at zero degrees of Gemini and um, hiatus at six degrees of Gemini. Sedna is this new earth energy bringer, as many of the Kuiper belt objects are, but Sedna is the archetypal uh, universal consciousness that is a constant uh, present now and is ever so more present for Earth, particularly due to her close 
proximity, close <laughs> proximity to Earth at this time as part of her 11,000 year orbit. Now, this lunar eclipse, and particularly the contribution of this air trine, is that opening portal on how to self master ourselves within relationships. It's to look beyond our current patterns in relationships and bring in a mix of new earth energy, higher consciousness, universal wisdom as part of how we um, carry out relationships, not only with ourselves, but primarily with others. And that dynamic, it's a highlight of a new opportunity for us here at this lunar eclipse. And this air trine is going to be in place, of course, with the supergalactic center trining Pluto and Sedna for quite a while be throughout the eclipse season and beyond. So this lunar eclipse, this air trine is asking us to transcend our mind related patterns uh, in the air element here around relationships and, and consider the new earth energy that's coming in through Sedna and the, the creativity it takes to have a new perspective. And this is a strong influence from the Pleiades star cluster and also the hiatus star cluster. Pleiades are carrying a higher ascension energy. They're a little bit ahead of us when it comes to evolution energetically and also hiatus with a strong archetypal energy around creativity and infusion of imagination. So I want to highlight Sedna as part of this grand air trine that we have highlighted here at this lunar eclipse. Sedna is a key energy for our evolution here on Earth at the time. And for you who have followed Sedna's journey, you know that Sedna first made her ingress into Gemini, a new sign since 1966, uh, in June 2023. And if you noticed in the chart, she's back at 29 degrees of Taurus now. Uh, this eclipse season is a, a key transition time for Sedna as well. And by early May, she will enter back into Gemini. So that's beyond this uh, eclipse season that we will have. It's an important transition time. And if you notice also uh, and follow Pluto's journey, he is going back to Capricorn, a little stint back to Capricorn or uh, later this year, but by, by late November this year, 2024, both Sedna and Pluto are going permanently into their respective new air signs, if you will, Sedna into Gemini, Pluto into Aquarius. And that's interesting. So the times we're in now is key both for Pluto, of course, and Sedna and their, their shift in energy. And I want to talk just a little bit about Sedna as this unique uh, new earth energy. And here you can see Sedna uh, in an image that I uh, have used from Alan Clay's new book, New Stars for a New Era. Uh, which I I feel is so beautiful. It comes with and see almost the the super galactic center there in the swirl and the new uh, rebirth type of energy that she comes with. And also, I want to highlight her uniqueness, and that's part of her energy signature. Is this uniqueness about her, not only from her eleven thousand four hundred year orbit but also in the way she is um, bringing herself to uh, her presence, which is very much balanced, yin yang, uh, and how she um, comes into union with her emotional self. And I feel that, that the uniqueness of Sedna's archetypal energy is really highlighted here in the lunar eclipse energy. Because in relationships, we want to be that unique being we are and the freedom to be so. We want to have the freedom to be our unique self within relationships. And 
Sedna was one of those that wanted to um, partner with um, something different than what was expected from her traditionally. And that brought her to uh, a balance within, uh, ultimately, to accept herself as she is, but also uh, come into union within herself about that. So that Sedna's message as part of this grand air trine is very much to honor the unique being we are within relationships. And this is what I feel is, is so important now at this time when we have this opportunity to turn a page, perhaps uh, letting go of past patterns related to relationships that we may have been maintaining for a while, but actually discover ourselves uh, anew uh, as part of our relationships. So that's, that's so beautiful. So here we have the second theme that I called Be Your Own Guru. And in this theme, we're going to focus on the sign of Pisces and the ruler of this lunar eclipse, Venus, which is uh, here at 16 degrees first, and uh, conjunct Eridanus Archanar. And we're going to talk more about Archanar as a fixed star in a moment. But if you also can notice here in the chart, Mars just entered Pisces at one degree of Pisces, conjunct now Fomalhaut, the royal star Fomalhaut at four degrees of Pisces. And haven't we talked about Fomalhaut in many videos in the past? So now it's time for Mars to get the glory <laughs> of the angelic guidance that is available through the royal star Fomalhaut and opposite also the royal star Regulus. This is a highlight of guidance to Mars to really start to take action. It's a guidance for us to take action on our spiritual self and the guidance that we have available to us from the angelic realm. Uh, and so Mars is getting his infusion <laughs> here, entering in the doorway of the sign of Pisces. So this is, this is really prominent and a highlight uh, at this lunar eclipse because Mars is this day-to-day action-filled uh, energy. So if we haven't taken action on our spirituality and the guidance that we can receive from the unseen, now is the time. Uh, this is a key point for Mars as... Mars is not really comfortable in Pisces because he really wants to be in Aries. But now he is there in the doorway, in the portal of the spiritual self. And uh, he's getting an infusion from Regulus and Fomalhaut here uh, as he enters. Now, Venus is conjunct Saturn in Pisces at 12 degrees of Pisces. And Eridanus uh, constellation, and specifically the fixed star Archanar, is a influence uh, of futuristic energy. And we'll talk about Archanar in a minute here. I want to highlight the interactions that Venus as a ruler makes in this chart. First, we have a beautiful trine to Sirius A at 14 degrees of Cancer. And for some reason, I didn't get Sirius A in here, but 14 degrees of Cancer is Sirius A. Sirius A is uh, an energy of spiritual wisdom. Uh, it's a uh, repository of um, archangel, ascended master type of energy that we have access to at this lunar eclipse. Very much uh, spiritual wisdom, archetype. Now, Venus is also making a square to the hiatus star cluster. A square here means that we're uh, asked to increase and uh, pay attention to expand into more of our creativity. The hiatus star cluster at six degrees of Gemini is suggesting to us to really focus on our creative side and whatever that may be, 
creative side in terms of how we can view something differently as well. It's not just in terms of bringing creativity into form, but actually be creative with our thoughts as well. And we also have the sextile to Jupiter at 15 degrees of Taurus that I mentioned before, conjunct Andromeda, uh, Almac. This is also um, building this sextile support that Jupiter and Saturn has at this lunar eclipse. And you may notice that there is a powerful sextile to Lyra Vega at 15 degrees of Capricorn. And Lyra Vega didn't make it into this chart either. But I want to uh, emphasize that human galactic heritage has very much to do with Lyra Vega and Sirius A, respectively, when it comes to uh, retrieving ancient spiritual wisdom uh, that has to do with our soul's journey and many of us who are incarnated here on Earth right now. And our desire to bring back ancient wisdom from both Lyra Vega, which is really a uh, more feminine, uh, femininely charged uh, energy associated with Lyra Vega versus Sirius A, which is more a, a masculine um, charged energy, if you look at them archetypally. Now is the time. This is a very supportive energy to connect with this type of wisdom within ourselves so that we can come to our own answers. We have all the answers within. Our soul knows what the truth is, and often it's retrieved from our past incarnations, whether it would be in Lyra Vega or Sirius A or elsewhere. This lunar eclipse is a connection point to um, connect, retrieve ancient soul wisdom. So the suggestions here from this second theme, as I see it, is now take action on your spiritual wisdom so that you can access it to be a guidance, a guidance force for you. Uh, that Mars energy is really getting the um, initiation, walking through the portal here and at the first degree of Pisces at the moment, and conjunct formal health and opposite Regulus. Venus is connecting with multiple galactic points here, both Andromeda Almac, Hiatus Star Cluster, and Sirius A, Lyra Vega. This is all um, ancient galactic soul wisdom that we have access to now. And if we step into that through the heart, uh, that is our opportunity to uh, gain a bigger perspective. And with Venus conjunct Saturn here, there is a lesson involved. Saturn is a prominent energy to help this transformation uh, within ourselves to come into balance between Mars, Venus energies, the masculine and the feminine within ourselves. So Mars is here highlighting this lesson for us at this lunar eclipse. I want to highlight the constellation Eridanus here and the fixed star Archanar. And I also added an image here for you to connect with to feel into this free-spirited, um, forward-thinking energy that is associated with Archanar. Uh, and it's Venus that's conjunct this energy at this point. This uh, Archanar is also this energy associated with a spiritual expansion and how we are uh, faithful in the sense to devotional to our own spiritual practice. This is all about expansion and relying on ourselves to know the answers. And how do we do that? Through faith, through believing in who we are and our authentic self. Archanar is inviting us to uh, connect with this energy through our heart. Venus conjunct Archanar now is also showing the way forward. The question becomes, how can we be more free-spirited in our lives? Not only 
with ourselves, but also as part of our relationship dynamics. Ultimately, it's about how we can be our authentic self in relationships, in our environment, but also ultimately with ourselves and be who we are. Archnar is giving us that strong message through Venus that this is happening by connecting with our heart and our intuition. So here we have the third theme that I've called the spotlight on self-liberation. And this theme is focused on the sign of Aries. And as you can see, there's a lot going on in Aries at this lunar eclipse. I want to start first with just highlighting the sun as part of this full moon. This is a huge highlight in this area of the chart by the sun at five degrees here. So that makes it even more important. Aries is all about the self. And we have North Node, Chiron, Mercury as well in Aries. Now the North Node, if we start there, is conjunct the Andromeda Alperats. So Andromeda Alperats is associated with this archetypal energy of freedom, independence, freedom from limitations. And Alperats being in conjunction with North Node here is giving us an indication of that energy, where we're going, where we're going next. So, and also the T-square that we have uh, from the North Node and Lyra Vega at 15 degrees of Capricorn and uh, Sirius A, 14 degrees of Cancer, is helping us transmute that karma that we may have carried from incarnations in Lyra, incarnations in Sirius before. So it's a clear um, opportunity to transmute some of that. You know, the T-square is comprised of two squares and an opposition. So the growth opportunity here is evident by the North Node at 15 degrees conjunct Andromeda Alperats. And then we have Chiron, the lesson and the wound that we are working on to transmute into potential. Chiron at 18 degrees of Aries, now conjunct, almost exact to Cetus constellation and the fixed star Tau Ceti. Tau Ceti is uh, the archetypal energy that gives us direction on what this collective wound is all about. Tau Ceti represents energy of diligence, of supportive energy, of service, of um, enterprise. How can we build our own uh, future so that we are sustained? Tau Ceti is the energy of the sun as well, which is very much the uh, inner life force, but also our healthy ego. So Cetus constellation, the whale, is one of wisdom, of the water as well. So it's about going with the flow, allowing the um, the tides to come and go, to go uh, ride the wave. So any lessons we have around that, we are highlighted here. And the, the Chiron placement between the North Node and Mercury is also telling because it, it is what we need to learn, but also what we need to communicate and speak to in our relationships potentially. What is that new direction that you need to share with someone, a direction you want to go in, something you've been thinking about for a long time. Oh, I wish I, I had this, uh, you know, path forward. Now is the time to start communicating that. Because lastly, Mercury here at 23 degrees of Aries, opposite Boots Actress is an important opposition, connecting Mercury with uh, universal wisdom through the Actress uh, matrix of energy, which is ascension energy. It's Blu-ray energy. It's very high frequency energy that we now have access to. And Sometimes an opposition can be a download. Mercury in opposition with uh, actress here is not uh, surprising if there are new insights that may come through that you have uh, not realized before because of the higher perspective now available to you. 
I also want to highlight that Chiron's placement now conjunct Cetus Tau Ceti fixed star is a highlight of the solar eclipse energies because the solar eclipse is going to take place at 19 degrees of Aries and that's right where Chiron is at this time. So Tau Ceti is uh, energy associated with transformation and, and um, highlights, eclipse highlights right now. So here we have Tau Ceti. And I also have pulled in a uh, image here created by uh, Crystal Alexis for you to connect with this energy of, of Tau Ceti, of being your own guru, but also uh, that liberated self, um, being who you are in all the glory and uh, colorful self in creativity that we all have a birthright to express. Tau Ceti, here you can see it on the star map here, its location within the Cetus constellation. And Tau Ceti's uh, energy is also very much connected to the environment, to nature, to being aligned with the flow of either nature or water uh, or air, but in Aries here, it's really self-focused. Uh, and I feel that this lunar eclipse is very much uh, starting a process of the next level self-liberation. And Tau Ceti archetypal energy is very much part of it. So in summary, the first theme around multidimensional relationships as emphasized by this grand air trine uh, highlighted by the moon conjunct super galactic center. This is really a highlight on how can we see our relationships in a new way uh, from a different perspective, bringing in universal consciousness to support that perspective. How would it look different? The second theme is be your own guru, focusing on the uh, portal we see in the sign of Pisces as Mars has entered Pisces now, conjunct Fomalhaut, the royal star and opposite Regulus is getting an infusion of that angelic guidance as he stands there in the, in the portal. But Venus in Pisces really is the one that drives the transmutation of energy, not only with human galactic heritage associated with Lyra constellation and Canis Minor and Sirius here, but also with the free-spirited Archanar in the Eridanus constellation, which is the future, the way to have your own spiritual philosophy, living it out, being the authentic electric self that you are. And the third theme, a spotlight on self-liberation, the focus on Aries here, the self, where we have our future direction of North Node conjunct Alparats in Andromeda constellation about uh, liberation from limitations. We also have Chiron now in the Cetus constellation aligned with Tau Ceti fixed star, the, which is also a preview of the energies that are going to be even more emphasized uh, related to uh, Cetus Tau Ceti when the solar eclipse comes around on April 8th. Now, this is a beautiful swirl of energy related to ourselves, our relationship with ourselves, but with high focus on relationships to others and how we can see that mirror within ourselves. So I have a couple of questions. Should you want to integrate this lunar eclipse energy some more? And the first question is, how can you expand your perspective on your relationships? How can you view your relationships, whether it may be family, friends, uh, situations, uh, work, any relationships that you maintain at this time, how can you see them differently? How can you bring your relationships to a higher perspective? The second question is, what would it mean for you to be a master of yourself, to be your own guru? What would that 
how would that look like for you? What would you do differently if you were a master of yourself? The third question is, what is your next direction? Chiron already is showing us the archetypal energy of uh, this solar eclipse coming up, but also with the North Node being in a T-square with Lyra and Canis Minor Sirius, there is part of something here that we are releasing with this swirl of energy that we have, this air grain trine. What is that new direction? What is that turning page worthy turning point that we are now uh, presenting to ourselves as part of this eclipse season? And how is that new direction associated with your self-liberation? So this is the galactic astrology reading for this lunar eclipse. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There's a link in the description box below. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for watching. I love doing these readings for you. And shortly, there will be a, another reading for the solar eclipse coming up. I'm very excited to share that with you. And I welcome you back. Thank you very much. Bye.